going to start fluid dynamics. Please write it down. Okay, so in fluid statics, we focus primarily with which property of the fluid? Pressure. Okay, why? Because that is where most of the time, uh, that is what is used most of the time. For example, you have to build a dam. Okay, suppose you are one of those uh, engineers who is building a dam. So you must know what is the amount of pressure the fluid can exert on the dam. Then only you will build the dam accordingly. Okay, and you must know uh, how much pressure is there as you go down a static fluid. Otherwise, you don't know uh, the how will you build a submarine, for example, or how much below a human being can go inside. All right. So, in order to understand all these things, I must know how is the pressure variation in a static fluid. Fine. So, uh, fluid. In the fluid, our focus was majorly talking about pressure itself. Okay. In fact, the buoyant force that we have discussed. Yes or no? Right. In the buoyant force itself is nothing but an outcome of the pressure variation itself. Fine. So our major focus was pressure. All right. And then we, when we studied the solids, what was our major focus? What was our focus when we studied the solid? Our focus was the strength of the solid. Oh, you are our student only. <laughs> All right. So, uh, when we studied the solid, our focus was the strength of solid, how it will break, when it will break, with what stress it will break, why we are focusing that property of the solid, because that is, solid is used in building structures, right? So, I must know how much load I can give to a solid. So, we are focusing on that property of solid when we have properties of solid chapters. But when we have properties of fluids, we don't focus on strength of fluid. I am not going to build pillars from the fluid. Okay? But there will be scenarios like building dams and so uh, like I will be you know you will be probably building the submarines. So you must know how the pressure will vary and because of that pressure variation, what all things can happen. Fine? So that was our prime focus when we had fluid statics in the question. Now we are moving forward. Okay, we are going to talk about the physical properties of fluid when it is flowing. What is the difference between flow and a motion? Uh, you can take a bucket of water and run with it. The fluid is not flowing. Okay, fluid is at rest only. So fluid statics will be applied there. Alright, when I say flow, have you discussed this flow thing already? Okay. So when you take a solid, when you take a solid and you apply a shear force like this, what happens to the solid? Solid will get deformed like this, there will be angle of deformation like that, shear strain will be there, right? But when you take a fluid, solid offers some resistance against this external force and that is what is the shear stress. Okay, whereas the fluid offers no resistance to the shear force. Are you getting the difference? So the shear stress is almost zero in the fluid. It can get deformed indefinitely. So one layer of the fluid can move relative to the other layer of the fluid with, with a very very minimal amount of force. Okay, so that is the difference between a solid and a liquid with respect to the flow. The shear deformation is called the flow itself. In fact, if you heat the solid, if you heat this solid, it will go towards the liquid. Its behavior will tend towards the liquid's behavior or the fluid behavior. Fine? So this is called the flow. Alright? But we are not going to use this technical definition uh, whenever we study the 
the fluid property when water is flowing. So just like in the previous case, whenever fluid was flowing, we were making buckets. Now when we have to discuss the, the flow of the water, what will be drawing? A pipe. Usually water is flowing, up, uh, the fluid is flowing inside the pipe only, right? So that is how we will represent a water that is flowing. A pipe will be drawn, a portion of a pipe will be drawn and water is flowing inside it, okay? Now, when I talk about fluid dynamics, what do you think the kind of properties I am looking for? Velocity. Why I am interested in the velocity of the fluid? Okay. Why? Okay. He is saying type of the flow. Do you understand what does this mean? Type of flow? Okay. Correct. You, you know it. So for example, if you, uh, if, you, uh, if you open the tap of the water in your, uh, in your home, when you open it lightly, then a very smooth flow happens. Okay? When you open it completely, the behavior of the flow changes. Right? So that is turbulent behavior. Okay? It so happens that the same fluid, when the flow is laminar, the property is different and the flow when it becomes turbulent, the property completely changes. Have you ever encountered turbulence when you are in a flight? Okay, so when you are in a flight, if there is no turbulence, it will be going very smoothly and your aircraft is designed for the laminar flow. But when the flow changes to turbulent, same air which was letting the aircraft go smoothly, suddenly the aircraft will drop by 100 meters. So property has changed just because the flow is changed, right? So when I talk about fluid dynamics, I need to study the property of the fluid when there is a laminar flow or a smooth flow and then I have to discuss the property of fluid when it is a turbulent flow separately, okay? Now luckily in your class 11th, turbulent flow is not there. Although it is there just to find out whether the flow is laminar or turbulent, but we are not discussing the property of uh, the fluid flow in detail when the flow is turbulent. Fine? So our focus is property of the fluid flow when the flow is laminar. Are you getting it? Okay, when it is smoothly flowing. We will be going, we are going to discuss what is this laminar or smooth flow, what it does it mean and how you can find out. But having said that, let's talk further about uh, what do you mean by property of, or let's say fluid dynamics, what are the kind of property? That is, one property we need to find out is what kind of flow it is, because the property itself depends on which flow it is. What else we will be finding out here, what do you think? We are right now assuming it to be non-discuss. Okay, what, what do you think? Someone said velocity. Why I need, I need to find the velocity? What is the reason? Why I need to find the velocity of the flow? Because if water is flowing with some velocity, it will have some momentum also. It can hit some object and that can start moving. For example, have you uh, heard of hydropower plants? What happens there? A turbine is there. On the turbine, water comes and hits and turbine rotates and that turbine is connected to the AC generator's coil and then with turbine the coil also rotates and that is how you generate the power in hydropower plants. Fine? So you should know what is the velocity of the water otherwise you will not be able to control the motion of the turbine. Yes or no? Right? So one is knowing the velocity then you know the momentum and then you know what kind of force water can exert on the turbine. That is just an example. What do you think the other property could be? Hmm? Energy. energy. Now, we have learned work energy theorem in work power energy chapter. Yes or no? Now, when we have, we have derived the work energy theorem, we have never said that this theorem is valid only for solids, only for gas or only for liquids. That is a universal theorem. It is valid everywhere. But the problem is, with the fluid applying work energy 
theorem is tricky. Why it is tricky? Because you take a pi, water is continuously coming in and going. When you write half mv square, which mass you will take? Infinite amount of mass will come in let's say 5 hours, so much mass is coming and going. So continuously, how you write half mv square? Which mass it is? Are you getting it? And similarly, when you talk about potential energy, mgh, and pipe is suppose vertical like this, clearly the water here has more potential energy than water there. What is flowing like that? But how will you write mgh? Which mass you will take here? Are you getting it? So the 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 for the the work energy format for this solid is such that it is inconvenient to apply in fluids. So we need to modify that work energy theorem so that it becomes convenient for us to apply work energy theorem here. And when you do that, the equation that will come out is Bernoulli's theorem. Okay, so work Bernoulli's theorem is nothing but application of work energy theorem in the fluid itself. Alright, now here when, when I have taken the example of pi, I have just told you that water is continuously coming and going. Alright, and I don't know which mass to consider. Now that kind of difficulty is not there with solids. Why? Because entire solid remains as a single object. Fine. So you need not worry about the... Okay, so what I was saying was that when it comes to solid, you don't need to worry about the conservation of mass. Because the entire solid remains as it is a single intact object. Mass M is given to given. But here the problem is the mass is continuously coming in and going. Alright? So I should not go against the conservation of mass. Somehow I have to apply the concept of conservation of mass in fluid also. It should not happen that I am assuming 5 kg is coming from here and at the same time 20 kg is going out from the pipe. That is not the, that is against the conservation of mass. Right? So the equation that will come out from the conservation of mass is called continuity equation. Fine. So we are going to discuss these two theorems only, continuity theorem and Bernoulli's theorem when we talk about fluid dynamics. And fluid dynamics is much more simpler than fluid statics. Even though the situation is little bit more involved, the fluid is no longer static, it is moving. But when you solve problem, you will realize that the problems of fluid dynamics are much simpler. Okay, so uh, let us start that. Okay, please write down uh, first. Since we are talking about the the fluid property, when the flow is streamlined, let us first discuss what is streamlined flow. Okay, so please write down streamlined flow. We we'll discuss that. As the name streamline suggests, there has to be some sort of line. Okay? So, suppose you have a particle. This is, this is nothing but the path one particle of fluid is following. When entire water may be going, this could be happening inside a pipe. Okay? Inside a big pipe, lot of fluid particles might be there. Many fluid particles, infinite fluid particles are there. Okay? But the definition of streamline flow comes from the motion of a single particle. Okay? Let's say one such particle out of those infinite particles follows this path. It goes from point 1 to point 2 and it follows this path. Okay? The streamline flow is a flow okay, for which the each particle, if it enters point number 1, it will follow the same path and will reach the point 2 also. Okay, so path between the two points is fixed. Are you getting it? That is what the streamline flow is. If somehow a particle comes and touches this streamline, it is going to follow this path. Okay, is this in clear? 
So in a streamlined flow, the path of a particle is fixed from a given point. Okay. 